Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, family, and welcome to the mental health with me, your host, Khadija. Um, I want to give you a little history about your favorite. Um, a lot of y'all didn't know some of the things. I'm sure um, about this illustrious franchise uh, called McDonald's is my kind of place. They feed you rattlesnakes, hamburgers up your nose, french fries through your toes. The next time you eat there, don't forget your underwear. McDonald's is my kind of place, your kind of place. Now, I know y'all remember that. Some of y'all old enough to remember. I might have changed a few of the lyrics around, but you all know. But listen to this. This untold tooth, truth about McDonald's, okay? Because now, like, everybody is familiar with McDonald's. The Golden Archers, the Big Mac, the Happy Meals. They're the stuff of fond childhood memories and guilty pleasures as well as adulthood. Because let's be honest, sometimes you get a craving for a Big Mac and some fries. And there's absolutely nothing that can satisfy the real thing. <laughs> Founded in 1940 by Richard and Maurice McDonald's, other words, uh, otherwise known as Dick and Mac, it took an entrepreneur named Ray Kroc and a ton of drama to how to put uh, McDonald's to the global fame that they have today. According to Mac McDonald's official history, Croc bought out the brothers in 1961 for a cool 2.7 million bucks. Now, adjusted for inflation, that's about $23 million today in, in today's money, okay? That's a lot of money, but considering Statistica says that McDonald's brand was worth over $126 billion in 2018, it's safe to say that it was a good investment. Damn. So, we know McDonald's is massive, and we know that, you, that you've that you been there dozens of times, but what don't you know about McDonald's? Hmm? What don't you know about McDonald's? It probably doesn't surprise you that a company this big has a ton of weird stories and that they try to keep quiet. So, I'm going to tell you those stories that they try to keep quiet. <laughs> Once McDonald's had to recall a million McNuggets. Y'all know. Y'all know about the McNuggets because y'all know y'all love them. While customers statewide might not have heard about it, McDonald's Japan had some major issues in 2014 and 2015. Issues so big and so gross that Mother Jones reported that they led to 10% of the sales decline. It started in July 2014 when McDonald's stepped in to take some serious action against one of their chicken suppliers. Shanghai Hussey Food Inc. Rumor had it that the factory was mixing expired product with the fresh stuff and then shipping it to McDonald's, Starbucks, and Burger King in Japan and in China. And that's just gross. Just a month later, a customer in Osaka found a piece of human tooth in their fries. And it doesn't need to be said just how big a deal that was. Then, in early 2015, there were several reports of customers finding pieces of plastic and vinyl in their chicken McNuggets, leading them to recall one million of the bite-sized chicken chunks. Their supplier, Cargill, investigated and came to the conclusion that the contamination didn't happen in their factory, so where did it come from? Mm, we may never know, but as long as it didn't come in ours, oh well to you. Man. So this, I'm just giving you all the reasons to get up out of there. 
I'm, I'm, you know, the McDonald's Big Mac isn't trademarked in Europe. Let's say you're opening a restaurant in New York and you want to call one of your burgers the Big Mac. Well, how do you think that will work out for you? Well, now if you were to open it in Spain, you'd be fine. That's because McDonald's actually lost a trademark to the Big Mac in the European Union after a decision by the EU Intellectual, Intellectual Property Office. And this is how it happened. The Guardian says that it was in the 1960s that Pat McDonald, McDonald who, or Mc, McDonough, was given the nickname Super Mac during a football match in Ireland's County, West Meek. Later, McDonough went on to open a massively successful burger chain, and he called it Supermax. When he tried to open locations outside of Ireland, McDonald's claimed Supermax was too close to the Big Mac. And um, that would lead to a brand confusion. But the EUIPO European, what well, was well, blah, 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 a rule in favor of Supermax, and it was a huge deal. It didn't just mean that the Irish chain could expand to other countries in the UE, in the EU. It also meant that Big Mac trademark was void. And that's huge, especially considering the number of lawsuits McDonald's had previously filed and won. They even prevented a dentist from opening a practice called McDental and a Singapore off, uh, coffee from getting uh, the trademark McCoffee. Wow. Now a different precedent has been, has been set. McDonald's is the world's biggest toy distributor. Wow. How about that, Leo? <laughs> McDonald's isn't just about food. And if you have fond memories of opening up your Happy Meal to see what kind of toy you got, you're certainly not alone. Many Happy Meals made their debut in 1979. <laughs> At the cost of one dollar. I remember that. My friend used to call them Crappy Meals. And they've been a popular staple ever since. So popular, in fact, that the Motley Fool says that in 2004, they typically accounted for about 20% of the sales. And that made McDonald's the largest toy distributor in the world. And that's incredibly valuable. We're in the hearts of, your, of kids, and not only do you get your, their parents' attention, but you got customers for life. <laughs> Happy Meals are changing with the times, though. In 2014, the Atlanta reported that because McDonald's UK ran a promotion that offered codes for ebooks instead of toys, it made them temporary, at least the largest book distributor in the uh, UK. You see, they can use their um, powers for good. Now, isn't that wonderful? They had people actually reading. Here's a fun fact. Yes, some of those McDonald toys are worth a decent amount of money. According to Mental Floss, if you have any of the late 1990s era McFurbies, any of the early Diener Kishi figures from the late 70s and early 80s, and any of the Monster Ink toys or full sets of the Minions um, or the 101 Dalmatians, you can earn yourself a little bit of cash. Might want to look into that. You might want to look into that. Um, that's just like I got a card collection, um, a basketball card collection, and I really, really want to look into what am I um gonna do with these particular items and uh how to get you know get rid of them. What kind of show? Where do I go with them? Uh, McDonald's is huge, and they're everywhere. But there's really uh, here's a, the really surprising thing: they're historically not the largest, fat, fastest food 
a chain in the world. Um, not by a long shot. First, a bit of a disclaimer. It's hard to give exact numbers because so many locations are opening and closing all the time. So let's talk about 2017. According to CNBC, McDonald's was only the second largest chain in the world. As far as uh, physical locations go, um, they were second. And, and while they had 37,241 restaurants, they were handily beat out by Subway and their 43,912 locations. Starbucks was a surprisingly distant third, trailing with their 27,339 stores. Mm. But that's a bit deceptive because when it comes to sales uh, growth, Starbucks and McDonald's were miles ahead. And now, let's talk about 2018 and stores that in the U.S. only. According to the Business Insider, Subway was still at the top of the pile with around 25,800 domestic locations. But Starbucks had recently passed McDonald's, opening 14,300 stores in comparison to McDonald's roughly 14,000. So, you know, go figure. And basically, McDonald's really doesn't make their money selling food. At a glance, McDonald's makes and sells food, right? So that must be how they make their money, right? Well, no, not quite. They found that a large percentage of their profits not comes from Big Macs and fries, but from real estate. Part of their franchising strategies involves buying the land the restaurant will be on and then leasing the plot to the franchisee. Wow. Um, and about 85% of McDonald's locations are run by franchisees. More than that, they are often they often lease the properties at massive markups. That mean even um, though there is an average, McDonald's makes around 2.7 a year. The average take home pay for the franchise owner is just about 154,000 a year. Around 22% of the profits go into rent, and the numbers are just staggering. Wow. As of 2016, McDonald's held about $30 billion worth of real estate, and that netted them an annual profit of $4.5 billion. Talk about a brilliant business plan, will you? The cost of doing business for McDonald's is shocking. If you ever thought um, about running a McDonald's franchise and you think it might be for you, then here's some pretty shocking behind the scene numbers that might make you think twice. Starting with the fact that the Business Insider reported that McDonald's requires each one of their new franchisees to have 750000 in liquid assets available before they'll even consider you. Startup costs can range uh, anywhere between eight hundred and fifty-eight thousand and two point two million, and that includes everything from construction to kitchen equipment and um, signage. Franchisees are responsible for paying forty percent of that with non-borrow cash, though they do allow you to borrow. The rest. Then the franchisees pay um, 45000 franchise fee as well as a 4% of gross sales every month along with the rent. They're also responsible for any upgrades that need to be done to the restaurant to keep it in line with the other locations. And some of those fees are pretty shocking. Create Your Taste kiosk will set you back $125,000. A cafe, McCafe espresso machine is a whopping $13,000. And upgrades to the interior can run up a bill as high as $600,000. Wow. 